Hello everyone, it's 7 Days to Die Overhaul Mod News time again, and we are now dealing with our October update. However, even with vanilla, Alpha 21.2 Experimental seems to be stuck in limbo with nowhere to go. Rebirth pushed their deadline into September and then changed to October with a chance for November. Furious Ramsey published an update, but without any release dates. Just that it will hopefully be soon, so it still may be November that we get to see Rebirth mods release this year. Apocalypse Now fans will have to wait even longer as well. Killer Bunny has published an estimated update and he pushed the date to January or February 2024. For real life reasons, he can't spend as much time on his mod. There is still a best case scenario released this year, but he said he doesn't want to make it too early as then he may not be able to deliver and then disappoint the fans. The Alpha 21 version of Apocalypse Now is really a huge step in features and additional items, so this one is well worth the wait when it does drop. Another mod which is widely anticipated is Undead Legacy. The huge amount of work that Subquake has plowed through in the last couple of months is still ongoing. He did say he is working on it as much as possible, but it's not going to be a matter of just converting the old version to make it compatible with Alpha 21. He is not only adding additional assets to the mod, but there are also massive overhauls going on in the background, such as for electricity and research. And just those two have taken many, many weeks to solve and implement. So maybe November, but what he made clear is that it will be ready when it is ready. So he does not want to narrow the time frame yet. Now, when I started looking at the Asia mod status this past week, I was going to say it was likely probably going to release this month or in November. The mod has posted that they were looking for German speaking testers, and I also noticed that a German Asia mod test member was streaming Alpha 21 test versions on Twitch during the early month of October. Then suddenly, without any fanfare, they quietly released the Alpha 21 version. So one of the most authentic era specific mods out there, after many months of work, they have released their new version. It is mainly a compatible version for Alpha 21, so don't expect many changes since the old Alpha 20. It is mainly an attempt to make Asia mod compatible with the new Alpha. Still an awesome mod that is finally out there and you can get your download link from our description, but it is also available on the mod launcher. District Zero mod is looking for some people to join their team. More specifically, players that have POI building experience. Xylox has asked people to build sci-fi points of interest, seeing as he says that he's not the most creative person out there. Hopefully some people will get involved in helping create sci-fi themed POIs. So if you're interested, please send him a message, even if it's in the future. Age of Oblivion has gone stable this past Thursday. It has been in testing for many weeks and has now moved to its stable version 7. It is still running on Alpha 21.1 stable, so don't use the latest experimental of 7 Days to Die. This version is quite different in many ways to the old version 6, and I really hope to do this glorious mod some deserved coverage with a patch video in the near future. Papa Mac and his team have put a lot of effort into this version. You can get it on the mod launcher and there is of course a link in my description. Now, before we move on to some awesome new overhaul mods, I just want to give a shout out to an excellent Discord and website on survival gaming. Yes, I know there are a lot of other survival news sites out there, but hashtag survival has been my go-to place for survival gaming news over the past few months. The team of three family members, but mainly run by user Sifna, covers many genres of survival gaming information. Besides the Discord, they have a website and a database which is currently being revamped, weekly news snippets, and also reviews of survival games, they also have various person of interest biographies which they do on various survival gaming devs and other people. They also do game giveaways of which I have won a few times. So <laughs> telling you guys to join hashtag survival is like shooting myself in the foot on this. The more people, the less chance I have in winning. But seriously, the trio run a very friendly and pretty comprehensive site and discord on the survival gaming news and information. This is not a paid promotion. Just I think they deserve a shout out and some more survivors out there should get to know about them. Give hashtag survival a look and hopefully a follow. Their Discord and site information is in my description. I'm sure you'll pick up on information about survival games that you never knew even existed, and they will keep you on the radar with, of course, the popular news that is going on out there as well. 
Right, back to one of the new overhaul mods for 7 Days to Die. Have you got what it takes to survive the Disong Tower Challenge? The Disong Tower Challenge is not new, however it certainly is becoming more and more of an overhaul these days. Recently launched this month and now compatible with Alpha 21, you can choose which biome you would like to start in and the tower is also undergone some editing for a more custom experience. You cannot leave the tower once you're in, and if you die, well, that's it. Permadeath. You are dead. Your goal is to survive and build a gyrocopter to fly off the roof. A lot of changes have been made to the loot, and zombies are now harvestable, and various changes have also been done to drop loot and overall balance for materials and ingredients. The mod credits a horde of modders, Hell's Janitor, Wookie Nookie, Keldon, Frantic Dan, Zarlox, Midnight Designer, Sferi and Pitch Silent. The mod is already available on Mod Launcher, well of course it is if Sferi is one of the modders, but you can also get the download from my description. The Resident Evil Spencer Mansion Incident mod has been updated and made available for Alpha 21. Created by Frantic Dan, it is another permadeath mod and you need to escape the Spencer Mansion. In Resident Evil, the mansion served as a means to secretly hide personnel and its connection to the top secret T-Virus bioweapons research lab. The actual incident is when the latest strand of the T-Virus is leaked out and contaminates the complex, turning the inhabitants into zombies. This apparently is more of a Resident Evil mod than an actual 7 Days to Die game. So take a look if you would like a different horror experience that will test your combat and maneuverability skills. Jax, the modder of Ravenhurst mod, has started publishing a new overhaul mod. Actually, the mod is quite old. It has been off and on since Alpha 16. However, development started on the mod again. Scavengers of the Living Dead has its roots in a Ramirez style of mod with no ferals or rads, but increased numbers. Headshots only, building and looting is important, and the old schematic system of finding recipes is back. So the shift is more to protect yourself from the nightly attacks than haul not every few days. Jack says it is more difficult but it is also a bit more laid back and if you are yearning for similarities to the older alphas like alpha 12 or 16 then this is for you. They have their own discord so you will find that link in my description. Finally Zolokhan's mod is yet another permadeath mod. He claims he didn't want to play 7 Days to Die to sneak around and calmly avoid zombies. He wanted hordes of zombies pursuing you and making sure you felt like this was a proper zombie horde game. The pace of the game is more frantic and you should never need to visit a trader. Many more unlockable recipes and crafting is key to your survival. Biomes have been equalized so that there is no advantage or disadvantage between the biomes, including finding ore, which is across all biomes. Animals spawn everywhere, so expect death to be around the corner as mountain lions and bears can easily be also in the forest biome and not just in the snow biome. Zolokhan has tried to balance the frantic pace with sometimes easier to kill zombies and animals, but you will still need to keep your wits about you as you navigate the hordes. Just a reminder, some mods are waiting for Alpha 21.2 to go stable, and then they will release their own stable version. This includes Darkness Falls, which is now on Experimental version 26. Regarding joke mod, Rizzo commented that this is <laughs> the longest egg experimental in the history of experimentals, and he is also only waiting for Alpha to get sorted out. He doesn't want to publish now and then mess everyone around, but publishing again as soon as the fun pimps release their stable version. Well, that is your general news for October. I publish my 7 Days to Die mod guides on my Snowbee Gaming website. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.